Hello and welcome to my video all about how to sew your own cravat. This is a very simple project even for sewing beginners and I'll take you through it step by step. This particular tutorial shows you how to make a Victorian style of cravat or ascot tie. Cravats are often pleated at the neck to reduce the width in that area but I'm making a plainer cravat where pleating is not required which makes it even easier to make. To make this cravat you will need some fabric, I'm using some budget friendly polyester satin in red but you can of course choose whatever fabrics you want. Because the cravat is reversible you can choose to use a different fabric on the front of the cravat compared to the back so essentially you could get two cravats in one. I however am going to use the same material for the front and the back. From your fabric you're going to need to cut out two pieces that are 50 inches or 127 centimeters long and 7 inches or 18 centimeters wide. So what you'll need is a piece of fabric that's half a yard or half a meter long and at least 50 inches or 127 centimeters wide. If you can't find fabric that's wide enough to cut the template pieces out all in one go then you'll need to instead cut four shorter pieces from the fabric rather than two long pieces. So this is an option if you don't have fabric that's wide enough and I'll be talking more about this later on. Other than the fabric you will need some paper to make the template with, A3 paper would be best, however you can always tape smaller pieces of paper together. You'll also need a sewing machine with a thread that matches the fabric you're using, as well as sewing pins, fabric scissors, a rotary cutter and cutting mat if you have it, an iron, a metal ruler, some pattern weights or similar if you have them, a pen or pencil, a fabric pen if you have it, and also pinking shears if you have them would be also handy, and a chopstick or knitting needle or something similar would be very useful as well. In addition I would also recommend having some scrap fabric, for instance calico or something very cheap. This is completely optional but if you're making a cravat for someone who's not an adult man, for instance you're making a cravat for a child, it might be worth having some scrap fabric just to test the sizing before you make the real thing, i.e. make a mock-up of the cravat before you make it for real. Okay so the first step is to wash and iron the fabric. Always check what kind of washing settings and also iron settings you need to use for the fabric. If your fabric doesn't come with any labels just google the type of fabric you're using. One thing to note about satin is that the edges do fray a little bit and shed fibres so just be aware of that. That's why I recommended pinking shears because if you cut the edges of satin with pinking shears then they don't shed half as many fibres. The next step is to draw out the template. This is the size of paper that you need to cut out. As you can see it's a symmetrical shape and if you're confident enough to transfer this shape onto paper then please go ahead and do so and skip ahead slightly to the next step. If you're not confident in doing so then I'm just going to give you some instructions now for how to transfer this template size onto paper. So first you need to have a piece of paper that's big enough. The piece of paper needs to be at least 25 inches by 7 inches. If you don't have a piece of paper big enough then feel free to tape smaller pieces of paper together. I think the easiest way to draw the template outline is to first draw a box 25 inches by 7 inches. Make sure the corners of this box are right angles then cut along that line and fold the rectangle of paper in half lengthways. This fold line is the center line of the paper and will act as a guide because this shape is completely symmetrical. So any measurement you make or line you draw either side of this center fold has to be repeated exactly the same on the other side of the center fold. The key to a neat cravat is to make it symmetrical. So I would just draw the template outline on one side of the center fold. 
and to do this you first measure 1.25 inches above the centre line and then you draw a line that's 11 inches long. Also make sure that you make a mark at the 9 inch point on this line. Then at the point that 11 inch line finishes, measure 3.5 inches from the centre fold upwards and mark that point. And then once more, working from that point, you need to draw another 11 inch line parallel to the centre fold. You then join the start of this second 11 inch line to the 9 inch mark you made on the first line and that creates a diagonal line. Then you measure 25 inches from the side of the paper where you started along the centre line and make a mark. You then join this mark to the end of the second 11 inch line and again that makes another diagonal line. This will complete half your template outline. And then all you need to do to complete the template is again fold the paper along the centre fold, this time folding the paper outwards so you can still see the line you just drew. And then you simply cut along those lines, cutting through both the layers of paper. This means that when you unfold that paper, you will now have the complete template and it will be perfectly symmetrical. Before we start cutting the fabric out, I just want to note about the sizes I'm using for this cravat. The sizes are suited to the average man. The good thing about a cravat is that the sizing doesn't have to be that precise. However, if you are making a cravat for a child, then it's probably worth making a very quick mock-up of the cravat, just using a single layer of very cheap scrap fabric and then trying it on the intended wearer. This way you can see how it fits and if you need to make any adjustments before you begin making the real thing. If it fits fine then there are no amendments to make. If it needs to be smaller then you can use safety pins to reduce the size and also cut any excess fabric off the scrap fabric mock-up. You can then use this amended shape as your template going forward. Ok, so now we have the template, we can cut out the fabric pieces. If you have bought fabric wide enough, i.e. at least 50 inches or 127cm wide, then it's best to cut out two long pieces of fabric using the template. To do this, first fold your fabric in half widthways, with the right or front sides together, on top of a cutting mat. You then place the template on top of the fabric so that the end of the narrow section sits on and lines up with the fold. You then can pin it in place. I only used one sewing pin right next to the fold, going through the paper and both layers of fabric. To hold the rest of the template still, I used some heavy items I found around the house. Although of course if you've got proper pattern weights, you can use them instead. So you can use sewing pins or pattern weights or a mixture of the two. The reason for folding the fabric is that the long fabric pieces you require are twice the size of the paper template. And folding the fabric and placing the template on top like this allows you to cut out the template shape times two in a lot less time. I then take my rotary cutter and cut around the paper template cutting through both layers of fabric. Using sewing pins and or pattern weights to keep the template still means you can use a metal ruler in conjunction with the rotary cutter to make sure you get nice straight lines. So simply place the metal ruler so that the edge sits on the line you need to cut and then roll the rotary cutter alongside that metal edge. Do this all the way around the cravat, making sure you go through both layers of fabric. If the corners are too difficult to cut with the rotary cutter because it's too big, don't worry about that, just cut what you can and then afterwards you can complete the corner cuts using fabric scissors. So once you've completed that cut, you can remove the template and you should then have one long piece of fabric. You just need to repeat this step one more time to give you two pieces of identical fabric. 
If you are intending to make each side of the cravat in a different fabric, then you will cut one piece out of one fabric and the other piece out of a different fabric. If you don't have a rotary cutter and cutting mat, by the way, feel free to use another method. For instance, you can use sewing pins to go through the paper and both layers of fabric to attach them all together all the way around the edge. And then you can cut around the template just with fabric scissors. Okay, so as an alternative, if you don't have fabric that's wide enough to cut out the two long pieces like this, then you'll need to cut out four shorter pieces of fabric instead. These shorter pieces will be the same size as the paper template, rather than double the size. But please bear in mind that you will need to add an extra half an inch for seam allowance at the end of the narrow neck section. The reason for this is that you're going to have to sew two of the shorter pieces together at this narrow neck section in order to create the longer piece that you'll need to make the cravat. Right, so to cut out the four shorter pieces, just place the template on top of the single layer of unfolded fabric and cut around it using the method easiest for you. Remember though that you need to add the extra half an inch at the end of the narrow section for seam allowance. So to do this, what I did was place the paper template half an inch away from the fabric edge as shown here. Then use sewing pins and or pattern weights to keep the template still and then cut around the edge of the template except at the next section where you want to add that extra half an inch. And at the end you should have four identical pieces of fabric that are the same size as the template except at the narrow neck section where it's half an inch longer. If you followed this option where you cut four shorter pieces rather than two long pieces, then the next step is to join those shorter pieces together. So you're going to pair up those shorter pieces and join them together at the narrow neck section using half an inch seam allowance. So what you do is you take two pieces of fabric and put them face to face, so right sides together. You then pin along the narrow neck section, as I'm showing here, with the pins perpendicular to the fabric edge. And then you simply take it to your sewing machine and sew half an inch from the edge straight across that narrow section. To do the sewing, I used a matching red polyester thread and I used a straight stitch. The stitch length I used was 2.5 millimeters. The easiest way to sew consistently half an inch from the fabric edge is to make use of the markings on the plate of the sewing machine or to use a magnetic seam guide. This will join the two pieces together to make one long piece of fabric. You will need to do this two times. I then used fabric scissors, although you can use pinking shears, to neaten up the seam by removing a little bit of the fabric bulk. I then used an iron to press that seam open, again using the correct heat settings for my fabric. To press a seam open, you simply part the fabric edges and then press with an iron so that one fabric edge goes to one side and the other goes to the other side. So it just becomes neater and flatter. Okay, so once you've done that two times, you will now have two long pieces of fabric. And now we simply need to sew them together to form the cravat. At this point, you can quickly take one of the long pieces of fabric and try it on the intended wearer, just to make doubly sure that it's going to look right and fit right. If you need it to be a little bit shorter or thinner, then now is the time to make those amendments. Although always make sure that every amendment is repeated on the opposite side because symmetry is so important with a cravat. The next step is to take the two long pieces of fabric and place them face to face, i.e. right sides together with all the edges lined up. Then you need to pin almost all the way around the edge so that the sewing pins are perpendicular to the edge as shown. This simply makes it easier to remove the pins as you sew on the sewing machine and it makes it harder to sew over the pins accidentally. 
Be sure to leave one of the pointed ends unpinned. You will be leaving this end open and not sewing it closed until much later in the process. You then take your cravat over to the sewing machine and start sewing with the straight stitch again, starting from next to the unpinned section. You sew all the way around the cravat, except at that one open end, removing the pins as you go. I sewed half an inch away from the fabric edge. However, if you prefer, you can sew a quarter of an inch away from the fabric edge instead, as that is a more common seam allowance. Either way, it won't make much difference to the size. So it's up to you which seam allowance you choose. Please ignore the fact that I have sewn onto the pointed end of the cravat so that the opening is smaller than yours will be. I learnt the hard way that the smaller the opening, the more difficult it is to turn the cravat inside out. So definitely leave the entire pointed end open. And now I need to remove some bulk between the stitch line and the edge of the fabric by cutting out some fabric at the corners. This is just so that the areas are not so bumpy and bulky when the cravat is turned inside out. So you need to take your fabric scissors and cut diagonally at the convex angles, like here. Whatever you do, make sure you don't cut too close to the stitch line because you don't want to cut the stitching and you don't want to make a hole. So definitely leave a couple of millimetres, at least, between the stitches and the fabric edge. And cut a notch out of the fabric at the concave angles, as seen here. Once you've done that, you can turn the cravat inside out. To help you do this, you can use a chopstick or the blunt end of a knitting needle or anything long and thin that isn't pointed. This will really help you get the bulk of the fabric through that narrow neck section. You might need to have a bit of patience with this step because it can take a while to get started and it can be a bit fiddly. But just keep going and in the end you'll have something that looks like this. As you can see it's a bit creased and looks a bit bulky. So the next step is to press the cravat with your iron. So take it over to the ironing board and you want to press the seams all the way around the cravat just to make them nice and neat and flat. At the open end of the cravat, fold the edges inwards by about half an inch and press with your iron. You then need to add sewing pins to the open end of the cravat to line up the edges with the edges folded inwards, ready for sewing. You then need to top stitch around this edge to close it. Obviously, because the cravat isn't inside out anymore, these stitches will be visible from the outside of the cravat. So it's best to try and make them as neat as possible. However, you should also note that these stitches won't be visible once the cravat is being worn. So don't worry too much about them. You can sew these edges a quarter of an inch from the edge if that's easier for you. However, I like to sew as close to the edge as possible when I'm top stitching because then the edge is a little neater. But don't worry, just do whatever's easiest for you. If you prefer to hand sew this end shut instead of using a sewing machine, then feel free to do so using something like a whip stitch. And there you go, there's the cravat finished. I think it's a really nice project for a sewing beginner because it's quite simple, but as you advance your skills, you can add more and more details to it. For instance, you could add pleats or ruffles. You could use all sorts of different fabrics, or you could even add a technique like a plique or embroidery. I really hope you enjoyed this project and I hope you found the instructions helpful. Thank you very much for watching.